Let's speak now to Marina Pacenta, whose 16-year-old niece, Sonia, is currently in Ukraine in the northern outskirts of Kyiv. We spoke to her a few days ago, a couple of times, actually, when she told us she was spending the night in the basement to escape the shelling. Uh, Marina is in the studio now. Good morning to you. Good morning. I know how emotional this is for you, so do take your time on this. How, how is your family doing? What do you know about them? Uh, my family, three members of my family, including Sonia, um, left the house about an hour ago and they are walking now towards the bridge uh, which uh, was destroyed. You probably saw pictures uh, which appeared in many media across the world. Uh, they will have to cross uh, this uh, broken bridge and then uh, they will be collected on the other side. The problem is that yesterday there were multiple instance, instances of shelling uh, and killing uh, civilians being shot at while they crossed or soon after the crossing. Um, and on social media there were pictures of entire family being families being killed and also uh, people uh, trying to flee in cars and the cars were shot at as well. So uh, literally these moments, uh, I really fear for their lives. I really do. I still have my mother and my other sister and another member of the family staying behind because they were too frail. They cannot walk anyway. So I still need to think how to evacuate them. I just would like to say that, you know, I spoke on this radio a week ago and I just would like to say that in this week, the situation is now, uh, you know, uh, the, the town is descending into medieval times. They experienced such horrors. Uh, there are now reports of rapes taking place, reports of wounded children who uh, uh, Russians do not allow to be evacuated to hospitals. Uh, there's no electricity, no telephone connection, no gas. They spent last several days huddling together in a small house uh, without any heating. Uh, the food is running out as well, and we only occasionally manage to get in touch with them, uh, and we knew, we know up until now that they are safe, but I don't know what is going to happen next. So uh, as we're talking now, th they're making the walk? Yes, precisely. Uh, in fact, all the um, pictures that now appeared on the front pages of uh, uh, British um, you know, newspapers, they're all from my native town, which is really painful to watch. Do you know where they'll get to? Where, where, once they cross the bridge, where do they go? Uh, there's an organized collection uh, by buses, and they will take them to the railway station. But uh, in my family's case, and I, I'm sure it's for many other families, they organized, uh, you know, kind of private collection uh, or relatives who are on the other side who will pick them up. And where will they get to eventually? Uh, I, I think whoever, wherever they can, to Western Ukraine, many will head directly to Poland or to other crossing points with other countries. Would you like them to come here? Uh, yes, probably Sonia and maybe some other members of my family. I have quite a big family, uh, so uh, <laughs> I really need to think who will go where, but yes. And you and you think that we, they'll be able to get into this country okay? You feel confident? Uh, that this, this yes, that's actually another point that I would like to make strongly because I've just read in the papers uh, that very few Ukrainians were granted visas. As you know, uh, Ukrainian citizens need visas to get here, and even those who, even those of them who have relatives here, families, they still had to go through this procedure. Uh, I read also yesterday in the papers that. Um, in Calais, on the French side, there were several thousands of Ukrainian refugees trying to cross. Uh, my understanding from this report was they also have family in the UK and they were told to go to Paris and apply for a UK visa. I think, frankly, this is unacceptable because these are people fleeing war um, and something needs to be done very quickly to, to deal with this. And just finally, Marina, you know, we, we, as we and I have been talking all, all morning, this is... Uh, it, it just feels so devastating to us who are just watching it as observers. What, what's it been like the last couple of days for you? So people have a sense of, of what it's your country's surreal. going It's surreal. It's surreal. You know, I, I think a few days ago we had an impression that we can hold. I, I want to say that, yes, they are holding ferociously. It's just that, you know, the humanitarian catastrophe really puts a lot of pressure also on the uh, military and on the uh, territorial defence. Uh, otherwise, they would completely focus on fighting. Uh, and uh, obviously this whole campaign is to demoralize uh, Ukrainian leadership and Ukrainian population because Russian troops are not making uh, significant progress and they know this. So literally on day four they started uh, bombing civilians and the kind of weaponry that they use 
uh, you know, they use cluster bombs, they use uh, thermobaric weapons. Uh, they, in, in the courtyards of private houses, they find enormous unexploded, uh, you know, bombs, uh, which are 500 kilograms in weight. So it's really barbaric. And, uh, uh, you know, I really would like to call on uh, UK and international community to do something to ensure the safety uh, of uh, civilians, the safe exodus of civilians. And, and close the skies. Uh, and no fly zone, if possible. I, I know that there is a lot of uh, lots of statements saying NATO saying we will not do this. However, uh, they really have to to play asymmetric game in this and to think of other ways how this could be, you know, worked around this and how Ukraine could secure its skies because it's it's still holding very very strong. And as you have seen from the reports, uh, Russian troops uh, haven't managed to secure any major uh, city up until now. Well, listen, Marina. Uh we're all thinking. Of, uh, we're all thinking of your family, and we hope that we can speak to you again, and uh, you'll tell us that they're they're, they're safely in a place a place away from from the bombs. Thank you very much. Thank you.